church. The Lord bless everyone in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for such a special day, a special time before you. Thank you for your people. And Lord, we thank you for the great example of Daniel. We're asking, Lord, you raise up intercessors, even in our church, for the nation in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, with all our hearts, with all our faith, and with real passion. We pray for our nation. And Lord, by the people you are raising up, you turn the situation in our nation around in Jesus' name. Open our eyes of understanding tonight. And write your word in every heart. And Lord, we pray it will be a message you will act on. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're coming to Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, I read from verse 3, verse 4, and verse 5. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication, with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God, and made my confession, and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him, and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned, and have committed iniquity, and have done wickedly, and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Let's move on to verse 15. And now, O Lord, our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt and with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee renowned, as at this day we have sinned and we have done wickedly. O Lord, according to thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins, and for iniquity, for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people, Jerusalem, the capital city, and thy people, the nation, have become a reproach to all that I vouch us. Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplication and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. From those verses you can see that Daniel became so concerned for the nation of Israel and for the capital, Jerusalem. And he set himself to pray. And he says in verse 3, when he prayed, he offered prayer. He saw the face of the Lord. He made supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Whenever we pray like that and we set time apart, we wait upon the Lord and we seek the face of the Lord and the promise of God for those who wait like that for a purpose. The wait like that in prayer is that he will answer prayer. And as we pray, make supplications, and wait upon the Lord for our nation, the Lord will answer the prayer in Jesus' name. Praying people, interceding people, can turn the condition of our nation around for the better. It can be done. It will be done. By prayer, what we cannot do because we are not among the people who are taking decisions. By prayer, 
we can turn the hands of the Almighty God. And the hands of God can move our nation in the right direction. See the promise of the Lord for those who pray, for those who make supplication, and for those who wait upon the Lord for their nation, not just for our own personal interest, our own personal need, but for the whole nation. Uh, Isaiah chapter 64. And I'm reading here from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 64, reading from verse 4. It says, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither has the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he has prepared for him that waiteth for him. We're waiting on the Lord. We're making a supplication and we're interceding for the nation. It says, I has not seen, ears have not heard the great things God can do because of those who intercede. You remember the case of Abraham? He interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah. I had not seen, ears had not heard before him that a man, a single man, would take hold of the power of God for a city of a group of people like that. You've had the case of Moses, the man of God, who interceded and prayed for the whole nation of Israel. Eyes had not seen, and ears had not heard, had never entered into the heart of any man before that time that God will say, it's over for that nation. I'm going to destroy them. I'm going to blot them out, and yet a man stood in intercession in the sight of God and said no Lord you cannot do that and he began to give God reasons why that should not be done God answered him God will answer us for our nation God will answer us and for the people who are suffering and perishing and they don't know how to solve the problem and even the people who are supposed to bring solution they do not have all the answers to all the questions who are asking but we thank God that there is a church that can pray. And this is a church that will pray. And as we pray, God will answer our prayer in Jesus' name. And you will see what Daniel has done. The nation has been in captivity for 70 years. And after those devil 70 years, anybody could have said, well, it's over. Look at our condition, look at the suffering, and look at insecurity, and look at the oppression and the pressure. Seventy years have gone already, no change, but he went into the scriptures, and he prayed according to revelation. He prayed according to the promise that God had given. And as we go into the word of God, and we pray, God will answer. He'll answer your prayer. I said he'll answer your prayer. Give me good headquarters, say amen. amen. He will answer my prayer. And he will answer the prayer of all the churches as we rise up today. And as we, on Sunday, we're going to have a, this special event, Nigeria Praise. And as we pray and lead others to pray, great things are going to happen in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Lord himself has said in Second Chronicles chapter 7, Second Chronicles chapter 7, I'm reading here from verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, and we're reading from verse 14. In verse 14, it tells us, here is God himself talking, saying, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. If we stop pointing, accusing fingers, he is the cause. They are the cause. They are the problem. They are the people that are not making us to move forward. If we stop all that, and then as the people of God, we call on the Lord of God in heaven in prayer, something is about to happen. A turning around is about to come. As you think about the condition of our country, you think about the economy, and you think about, uh, you know, the insecurity, you think about uh, all the things that are happening, some of them you can read yourself in the papers, some of them you hear in the news, and some of them you feel, some of them you are part of it, and you see that we are suffering. 
something will happen. We're going to intercede. The supernatural will take over in Jesus' name. In fact, look at the condition of these people. Before the Lord said, if my people will rise up and pray. Look at verse 13. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. So agriculture is affected. Food production is affected. And farming drought setting in. And if I command the locals to devour the land. That is pestilence. That is uh, disease. That is plague. All those evil things happening. Uh, and people are getting sick. And more people are dying. And the rate of death is increasing all the time. And suicide on the other side is taking a great toll upon the younger, younger generation. Or if I send pestilence among my people in that situation in that predicament and under under that pressure if my people now which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven he will hear from heaven from tonight he will hear from heaven He'll open the windows of heaven. He'll turn everything that needs to be turned. And whatever powers, visible or invisible, are troubling the nation in the sky, in the sea, on the land, in the forest, and then in the backyard of a, a particular cutting, God is going to reverse everything. It says, I will forgive their sins. There's forgiveness for the individual. There's forgiveness for the nation. And I will heal their land. This land will be healed. This nation will be healed. And there will be a great revival of every good thing that we have ever hoped for in Jesus' name. Tonight, we are speaking on passionate prayer by the godly for the nation. Passionate prayer by the godly for the nation. We need to pray like Daniel prayed, and Daniel alone prayed, and God answered for that nation. What if we have more than one Daniel? What if we have ten? What if we have a hundred Daniels? What if we have a thousand Daniels? What if we have ten thousand Daniels, and they are praying in unity that God will have mercy upon our nation? He will answer. He answered just one Abraham. And he answered just one Moses, and he answered just one Daniel. And when these people, people of faith and people of the world, when we gather together and we raise a voice to the Almighty God, answers will come. Divine intervention will come, and the power of the Lord will wipe away the tears of our nation in Jesus' name. Passionate prayer by the godly for the nations there are three things we're looking at number one the power of a holy nation interceding before god the power of a holy nation interceding before god point number two the plea of a hurting nation for his intervening goodness the plea of a hurting nation for his intervening goodness. That is, we want the mercy of God to intervene. We want the goodness of God to intervene. We want the promises of God to come into action, into place, so that the nature of God, the mercy of God, the goodness of God, and the help of the Almighty will intervene in our nation. We're hurting, it will heal us. We're suffering, it will remove all the suffering in Jesus' name. The plea of a hurting nation for his intervening goodness. Point number three, the prayer of a humble nation with an involved government. The prayer of a humble nation with an involved government. What does that mean? We'll be praying for our leaders. Every Sunday we'll come together. And then during the prayer session, we pray for the government. We pray for the leaders because the scriptures enjoined us to do that. But now it's time. 
that we take that prayer even close to them if we're praying for them they ought to be a part of the prayer i said if we're praying for them they ought to be a part of the prayer we pray for the sick and sometimes we have to invite the sick we say we've been praying for you come in and come to be part of the prayer we pray for sinners and the sinners to come to the kingdom of god and sometimes we have to invite the sinners we've been praying for you come and be part of that prayer somebody has a need and somebody has a problem and we're sending our sos save our soul we're sending it to heaven that god will intervene for them and then we go to those people we're Say, you know we'll be praying for you but now we want you to come and be part of the prayer and if they come and they listen to the prayers themselves and they listen to the exhortation and they listen to everything that precedes that prayer it will engineer it will generate it will spur them to wanting to believe god and as they believe god while we're praying together with them the supernatural will happen and so we'll be praying with the, for the government but now we're inviting government officials this coming sunday we've been praying for you come in and be part of the prayer i said come in and be part of the prayer uh, when we do that it means that they themselves as they, hear, as they hear the prayer and they see the content of the prayer they themselves will join us and then god will answer from heaven in jesus name point number three the prayer of a humble nation with an involved government point number one the power of a holy nation the power of a holy nation interceding before god what nation can we call a holy nation who are those people a holy nation did you ever hear that the nation is holy and those people the holy nation then can take the prayer request they can take it unto the lord and then something great will happen in a bigger nation around them we're looking at first peter First Peter chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 9. First Peter chapter 2. We're looking at verse 9. But here a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. That's the church. That's the church. Church that is saved. A church that is sanctified. A church supplicating. A church saturated with scripture. A church having assurance that our God answers prayer. A church that God himself has chosen. A church that God has put in place. He calls them a holy nation. A peculiar people. That it should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. It is this church. A holy nation that the lord is first of all calling upon he says you know my nature you know my faithfulness you know my promises and you're already enjoying part of the blessings that are that have given you on the same basis you got salvation by repentance and prayer faith in god and you got sanctification by a consecration and prayer with faith in god everything you've got from me you got by prayer you know how to pray and now you are part of the body of christ you are part of that holy nation let that holy nation then that knows how to pray let them rise up and call upon the name of the lord and pray and pray for divine intervention for our nation actually the lord has said as we consecrate and commit ourselves waiting upon him and praying a great answer will come heaven will send forth an answer in jesus name i'm reading from psalm 145 psalm 145 i'm reading from verse 15 psalm 145 145 i'm reading here from verse 15 the eyes of all wait upon thee uh, that, that's what you have to do as a church we have a thought that you know the people that are the hem of affairs they'll solve this problem 
and then they will go through and then will have enough food to eat will have enough jobs there were there would have been a change but we have waited too long depending upon them and holding on to the promises they gave that a change is coming a mighty change is coming and they're saying that we're going to have a better country and then we're waited and waited and nothing seemed to be happening now the eyes of all wait upon thee the eyes of the church the eyes and the mind of the people of God. Now we're waiting for him. And thou givest them their meat in due season. Prosperity will come from God. Good economy will come from God. Good health care will come from God. And good uh, opportunities will come from God in Jesus' name. On the basis that the people of God will call upon him. On the basis that the people of God will send our urgent prayer unto God. As a holy nation. As the people of God. Verse 16. Thou openest thine hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. Only God can do that. To satisfy. To satisfy not only the major cities. Not only the mega cities, but to satisfy even the rural areas, to satisfy the old and the young and the children, to satisfy in every way all the needs of the citizens of the nation. Only God can do this and is going to do it. Thou openest thine hand and satisfies the desire of every nation. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near unto all, uh, unto all them that call upon him. If we will call upon the Lord from tonight, if we will call upon the Lord concerning our nation, the holy nation, calling upon the Lord concerning our nation Nigeria and our nation anywhere we are hearing this message God will answer our prayer it says in that verse 18 the Lord is near unto all that call upon him to all that call upon him in truth he will fulfill tell me tell me the desire of them that fear him as you are part of the nation and you see the predicament in which i find ourselves and, and you're saying i wish it were like this i wish it were like that you're looking for job and uh, you know job is not coming there as soon as uh, you ought to as uh, as as, uh, as quick as you want it and then you say i wish our country were like this that desire god will fulfill it will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserves all them that love him. He'll preserve our lives. Insecurity on the street, insecurity on the road, insecurity in the air, insecurity on the sea. You know, that boat has uh, capsized and now we've lost uh, these many lives. And then on the street, in the marketplace, this is happening, that is happening, and lives are not secured, but now security is coming. The Lord preserves all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. And somebody said, Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 8, the, prayer, the power of a holy nation interceding before God. We're looking at uh, Isaiah chapter 8. In Isaiah chapter 8, Reading from verse 16, Isaiah chapter 8, reading from verse 16, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. When a nation where it appears people are becoming lawless, it appears that uh, there is no law and you can go here and go there and think that you are going to have justice where you ought to have it and then you don't have that but prayer will turn everything around that every section of society will have what it ought to have there will be peace in our land there will be progress in our land 
and there will be justice in our land in Jesus' name. How will that happen? Verse 17, I will wait upon the Lord. It's by intercession. It's by prayer. It's by supplication. It's by seeking the face of the Lord. Like Daniel sought the face of the Lord. I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob. It's like people are saying, but where is God? There's so many churches in the land, but look at what we're going through. He seems to hide the space. All the same, I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel. From the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. You might think that this is limited to the Old Testament. I was talking about the church about the church praying, about a holy nation interceding before God. I and the children whom God has given me. Look at it in Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 11. It says, For both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church. You see that? It's talking about the church. It's talking about the holy nation. It's talking about this body of Christ, saved, sanctified, pure, and holy that will take the request of our nation take it before the lord i will sing praise unto him verse 13 and again i will put my trust in him we have trusted those people in their kind of you know campaigns will do this and will do that we relaxed and we didn't pray and we thought they will do it, they'll do it, and we voted them in so that this will happen and that will happen. But they didn't happen. Now we turn around the holy nation, the church, the believers, the children of God. Now we turn around and we say, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God has given me will be for signs in this land will be for wonders in this land. And as we pray, God will answer our prayer in Jesus' name. Isaiah, we're going back to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, and we're reading from verse 18, when the people of God pray, and when the holy nation, when we rise up in unity of faith, and we pray in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, Therefore, will the Lord wait? The Lord has been waiting for the church. Therefore, will the Lord wait? He wants intercessors like Daniel to rise up and do something and pray and bring the nation to the feet of the Almighty God. He's been waiting and now we're responding. I said, now we're responding. And it says, and therefore, will the Lord wait? that he may be gracious unto you. Did you say amen to that one? And therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that... Blessed are all they that do what? And wait, that wait for him. For the people shall dwell in Zion... At Jerusalem, thou shalt weep no more. Amen. Thou shalt weep no more. Amen. There are many things that cause tears in our country, in our nation. Some of them, some of those things that cause tears, they are very close to us. And we feel it to our very veins and to our very heart. But the Lord is saying, as we rise up, as we pray, as the holy nation will take hold of the mighty hand of God, all the things that cause us weeping, everything will vanish away. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear, he will answer thee. When he shall hear, he will answer thee. And though the Lord give you the bread of affliction, will be eating the bread of adversity, 
and drinking the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. And thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thine ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left, the Lord will answer the prayer of his people. Uh, let us see the early church prayed, holy nation, they prayed, they cried unto the Lord, and God gave the answer, Acts of the Apostles. I'm reading from chapter 4, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 21. So, when they had further threatened them, they let them go. When they had further threatened them, they let them go. There are parts of this country where the church is threatened. There are parts of this country where the church uh, is uh, threatened to operate and to operate freely. Although we have in our constitution freedom of worship, yet in some places in the land, the freedom is not like it ought to be there. And they were being threatened, and it says finding nothing, how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old, on whom this miracle of healing was showed. And being let go, after the threatening, being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said. And when they had that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. They lifted up their voice to God. That's the holy nation supplicating. That's the holy nation interceding that's the holy nation calling upon the lord it says they lifted up their voice to god with one accord and said lord thou art god which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is who by the mouth of thy servant david has said why do the hidden rage and the people imagine vain things the kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the lord and against his christ for of a truth against the holy child jesus whom thou hast anointed both herod and pontius pilate with the gentiles and the people of israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Behold our danger. Behold our predicament. And behold the way they want to edge us in and grant unto thy servants. And with all that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child jesus and when they had prayed like we're going to pray tonight when they had prayed i said like we're going to continue to pray the place was shaking where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the holy ghost and they speak the word of god with boldness will be bold the church will be bold will not be driven to a corner threats will not hinder us threats will not stop us and will not limit us the boldness from on high will come as the church will pray in jesus name acts of the apostles chapter 12 acts chapter 12 reading from verse 5 the power of a holy nation praying the power of a holy nation interceding before God. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. The holy nation praying, supplicating, it says prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God. For him, verse 6, 
intervention will come. I said intersection will intervention will come. But six, and when Herod would have brought him up first, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. As the church will intercede, will begin to see greater manifestations and ministries of angels in our land in Jesus' name. And the light shines in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. The church praying, the church praying, and chains fell off. As the church will now begin to pray, begin to pray as a holy nation and pray for our nation. All the things that bind our nation will fall. All the things that limit our nation will fall. And then he goes to say, And the angel said unto him, Get thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he says unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out, and he followed him. He wist not that it was true which was done by the angel but thought that he saw a vision the things that are going to begin to happen will be too good to many people they will say is this a dream or is this reality miracles in reality supply in reality a change mighty change in reality then goes on to say, and when they were past the first and the second watch, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. You didn't hear that one. It opened to them of his own accord, and they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of his shorty. That's what you are going to say. Yeah. Now I know. When those blessings uh, begin to flow, now I know. When the situation of our country changes, now I know. And when there is peace and safety and security everywhere, now I know. When we have enough food on our table, when we have enough job to go around, and millions and millions of jobless people are getting jobs, now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Point number one is the power of a holy nation interceding before God. Point number two, the plea of a hurting nation for his intervening goodness. The plea of a hurting nation of a hurting nation for his intervening goodness. We're coming back to Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. I was looking at you from verse 3. Daniel chapter 9, verse 3. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And then he goes on. And you can read the whole chapter and see how he prayed. The nation was hurting. And because of that hurting nation, that's why he went into prayer. Our nation is hurting. If you look at the youth at the young section of the, of the nation, we're hurting. 
If you look at the middle age, we're hurting. You look at the aged, we're hurting. You look at those who are sick and they try to go to hospitals. The hospitals don't have all the equipment they ought to have. And the nation is hurting. And you go into their Greek, the nation is hurting. You go into the media and you see what the social media, what they are putting uh, on the net and everything. The whole story is that we're hurting. And yet a hurting nation will not just fold our hands and say, well, it has come, it has come. No, prayer will change everything. Supplication will change everything. We'll plead before the Almighty God. Our plea, it will answer. It will heal our hearts in this nation. Somebody there said it will heal our hearts in this nation. You'll be part of the beneficiaries. You'll be part of the partakers of the blessing of God in Jesus' name. Look at Lamentation, Lamentation. I'm reading from chapter 2. Lamentation chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 18. The Lamentation chapter 2, verse 18. Their heart cried unto the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion, let tears run down. That's intercession. Let tears run down. That's pleading with the Lord. Let tears run down. That's passionate praying. Let tears run down like a river day and night. We're waiting upon the Lord. I was saying, oh Lord, we want this situation in our land to change. It will answer our prayer. It goes on to say, let the tears run down and give thyself no rest. Let not the apple of thine eyes cease, arise, cry out in the night. Supplication, intercession, prayer, arise, cry out in the night. In the beginning of the watches and pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every, sea, every street. It says our young people are fainting. Our young people are getting discouraged. Those who want to go to high institution, they do not have the means to go. And if they're going, if they go to the regular ones, uh, it's uh, so difficult because the millions of people wanting to enter. That's why you have the private institutions. And the private institutions, what they are charging, the parents cannot totally afford. That's why it's saying, uh, as the younger generation are suffering, it says, you will cry out for the lives of these children people who are suffering for hunger and for their needs of met on the top of every street. Lamentation chapter 3 verse 26. Lamentation chapter 3 reading from verse 26. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good that a man should quietly hope that we should not, uh, we should not encourage uh, uh, despondency, and we should not encourage discouragement. We should hope. We should hope. Answer is coming. Solution is coming. It says, "It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence, because he has borne each upon him. He putteth his mouth in the dust." He putteth his mouth in the dust. There's humiliation. Humiliation. Because of the suffering. Uh, even people have forgotten their dignity. And there are, you know, some people who ordinarily are dignified people. But because there's nothing to eat. They will do anything and everything to make need, to make uh, ends meet. It says, he putteth his mouth in the dust. If so be there may be hope. He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him. He is filled full with reproach. For the Lord will not cast, the Lord will not cast off forever. But though he cause grief, yet he will have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. We need to understand that God is compassionate. And God is merciful, and God is going to answer the prayer, is going to deliver his people in Jesus' name. For he does not afflict willingly, 
nor grieve the children of men to crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth to turn aside the right of man before the face of the most high many people cannot have their rights and they don't have the, uh, the you know human rights it's abused in, uh, in quite a lot of places and the lord is saying as we pray he will reverse everything he says to subvert a man in his cause, the Lord approves not. Even though the Lord has not approved all these things that are happening, but because we have not prayed, because we have not asked, that's why the answer has not come. But now the answer is coming. Because the people of God are going to pray. We're going to pray as a hurting nation. We're going to pray as a suffering nation. We're going to pray as a humiliated nation. Who is he that says, and it cometh to pass when the Lord commanded it not. Out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good. Wherefore does a living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins. Let us search and try our ways and turn again unto the Lord. Let us lift up our heart, with our hands unto God in the heavens. The time has now come for prayer. And the time has come for answers to the prayers. God will answer. If you are sure, say amen. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 25, I'm reading from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 25, reading from verse 8. He will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all, all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off the earth. For the Lord has spoken it. And it shall, and it, and, and it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. And he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him we will be glad and rejoice in a salvation. When the answer comes, you'll be part of the answer. The Lord will bless you. Spiritually, he will bless you. Materially, he will bless you. And all the things we've been searching for. And uh, you know, there are some uh, lucky ones. Uh, what do we say? We've we'll been able to escape and go out of the country. But how many people? You have a very mi a minority, very few that have gone. But the rest of us are here. And there are millions who are here. And they don't know what they're going to do. Prayer will change every condition. I say prayer will change every bad condition. We're looking at the word of God in Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7, we're reading from verse 6. Micah chapter 7, reading from verse 6. For the son dishonoreth the father, and the daughter riseth up against her mother, and the daughter in law against the mother in law, and a man's enemies at the men of his own house. If you're reading the newspapers, if you're listening to the news, if you're looking at the social media, you'll see what is happening in family sometimes because of making needs met and because of having all the things they want to have. If somebody in the family will take this one and go and sell. Another one, even a mother, will take a child and go and sell. And then relatives will take another person. They want to whatever they can do with that person to make money that's why it says the, the, the son dishonoreth the father if the father cannot provide the father becomes like nothing in the sight of that child the daughter rises up against her mother you, you read about all those things and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's enemies are the men now of his own house therefore i will look to the lord it says we don't give up we will not give up I said we will not give up 
all those aberrant uh, situations, all those things that ought not to be, and they are in our land, in our communities. And then it's like everything is upside down. That will not make us give up. We will look up to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation, and my God will hear me. And my God will hear me. Say that for yourself. Our God will hear us. As the church of the living God, as we're going to pray, and we pray for a hurting nation, this nation will have a reversal of every negative sin in Jesus' name. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he pleads my cause and executes judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. I shall behold his righteousness. Then she that is my enemy shall see it. And shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. In the day that, the, that thy walls are to be built, our walls will be built. I said, our walls of security shall be built in the nation. In that day shall the decree be far removed. In that day also he shall come even to thee from Assyria and from the fortified cities and from the fortress even to the river and from sea to sea and from mountain to mountain. Every part of the nation will be affected by the good answer the Lord is going to give our country, our nation, in Jesus' name. Sephaniah chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 7. Sephaniah chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 7. I say, surely thou will fear me, thou will receive instruction, so their dwelling should not be cut off. Howsoever I punish them, but they rose early and they corrupted all their ways. As you look at the whole system in the whole nation, as you look at whether it's education or economy or industry or anywhere, you will see there's corruption everywhere. They corrupted all their doings. Therefore, wage ye upon me, says the Lord. As you see that there is no hope anywhere, if we're waiting for them, it says, come to me and wage upon me until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation even all my fierce anger for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy for then will i turn to the people of a pure language i will turn to the people of a, of a pure language who are those those are the people of god they will not lie they will not deceive they will not be fraudulent and they will not uh, do anything uh, that will be impure. Their language, their labor, and the work of their hand is pure. That they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. And as we do this, answers are on the way. Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49. From verse 23, Isaiah chapter 49, reading from verse 23. In verse 23, and the king shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. God will honor his church. God will honor the holy nation. And the blessings will flow from the church and flow to the rest of the nation. 
and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Are you waiting for God? Are you going to wait on God? You will not be ashamed. Your family will not be ashamed. And our city will not be ashamed. And then our nation will not be ashamed in Jesus' name. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Of the lawful, captive, delivered? But thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered, for I will contend with him that contendeth with thee. I will save thy children. He will save our children. There is hope for this nation. There is hope for this country. There is hope for every community. As we will pray and seek the face of the Lord, there is hope in Jesus' name. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 14. Jeremiah chapter 14, reading from verse 20. Jeremiah 14, verse 20. We acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness and the iniquity of our fathers, for we have sinned against thee. That's the attitude of the intercessor. And that's how Daniel prayed. He didn't say, I'm righteous, I'm perfect, I'm holy. There's nothing wrong with me. Yes, there's nothing wrong with him. But he stood concerning the nation. He says, do not abhor us for thy name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. Look at disgrace coming upon our land, upon the name of our nation. Remember, break not thy covenant with us. Are there any among the vanities of the Gentiles that can cause rain, that can cause prosperity, that can cause fruitfulness? Can the heavens give the showers? Art not thou he, O Lord God? Therefore we will wait upon thee. For thou hast made all these things. We'll wait upon the Lord. The answers are coming. In our days, the answers are coming. In our time, the answers are coming. We will pray. I said we will pray. You will pray. The church will pray. And as we look up unto the Lord, the answer will come from on high. Psalm 1, 2, 3. Psalm 123. Psalm 100. And 23, it says unto thee, verse 1, Unto thee lift I up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Behold, at the eyes of the servants, look unto the hand of their masters. And as the eyes of a maiden, unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that he have mercy on us our intercession will not stop tonight our prayer will not stop tonight we'll pray and we'll keep on praying until he has mercy upon our land say amen, amen. have mercy upon us O lord have mercy upon us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with the contempt of the proud. Point number one, the power of a holy nation interceding before God. Number two, the plea of a hurting nation for his intervening goodness. Point number three now, the prayer of a humble nation with an involved government. With an involved government. We're not closing the door against uh, members of uh, the government just because they happen to be part of the government. And we say, no, don't come to our church. 
don't step inside because you know you are the people part of the people causing the problem we don't want you in our church we don't want to identify with you but want everyone to come the church is a public place and the church is a place available for everyone to come and hear the word of God not only that to see what the problem is and then to be part of the solution that's why we're going to pray the prayer of a humble nation we some involved government as you have heard in the announcement this uh, coming Sunday 25th of November uh, 2018 we're having a special time here Nigeria prays Nigeria prays and as Nigeria is going to pray from this place God is going to honor that prayer and people are going to see the answers to that prayer in the nation in Jesus name it's a nation that we will pray. It's a nation that a haughty nation will pray. It's a prayer that um, a humble nation will pray. And then we get everyone involved. Everyone involved. We are part of the problem. We must be part of the solution. All those officials, they are part of the problem. Everyone knows that everyone has been part of the problem. And now everyone has to be part of the solution. You'll be part of the solution. I'll be part of the solution. I will allow our government, our functionaries and officials to be part of the solution in Jesus' name. Can I have a good amen? If that's your desire, can I have another amen? If that's our expectation, can you have another amen? The prayer of a humble nation with an involved government. We're coming to uh, Second Chronicles chapter 7. Second Chronicles chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 13 and verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, humble themselves, a humble nation, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Our land will be healed. Our nation will be healed. Our government will be healed. And the people of the land will be healed in Jesus' name. In uh, Psalm 22, I'm reading from verse 27. Psalm 22, we're reading from verse 27. It says, all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. That's not just a small group. And it's not just a little church. All the ends of the earth. They'll come from different places. All the ends of the earth shall remember and shall turn unto the Lord. All the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. All the kindreds of the nations. The church is not just for, you know, those who are saved and sanctified and the little group and the few people who are there in comparison with the whole nation and then we are the few people going to heaven. All the kindreds of the nations. All the kindreds of the nations. I said all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. Why? Look at verse 28. For the kingdom is the lord's and he is you tell me and he is somebody will tell me there the governor of the among the nations that he is in every nation we have the human governor and that human governor ought to be under the governorship of the almighty god and if he is under the governorship of the almighty god he should come and worship god and it shall come and pray to God. It shall come and give that recognition unto God that you are the governor of our nation. You are the overall, the final ruler of our nation. We're coming to Second Chronicles chapter 1. Second Chronicles chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 2. 
Second Chronicles chapter 1, reading from verse 2. Then Solomon spake unto all Israel, and to the captains of thousands, and of hundreds, and to the judges, and to every governor in all Israel, and the chief of the fathers. There were governors in the land, and then all those governors came, and it says Solomon spoke unto them. Look at verse 5. Verse 5, moreover, the brazen altar the, and uh, that of, uh, of Belzeliel, the son of Horai, the son of Oth, mage at mage, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord. And Solomon and the congregation sought unto it. They were seeking the Lord. When he brought all the governors, they were seeking the face of the Lord. And this coming Sunday, we as a church, we as the holy nation, we're going to be seeking the face of the Lord. But not only ourselves, all the leaders who have been praying for, they're going to come in. All those uh, government officials who have been praying for, they're going to join us in the prayer. And it's going to be a special time of the whole of Nigeria praying unto God for a better situation in our country in Jesus' name. It was in that situation God said in verse 7, In that night the God appeared unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what shall, shall give thee? And then we we'll read from verse 10. In verse 10, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before the people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? We're coming to First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2. We're reading from verse 1. First Timothy chapter 2. Reading from verse 1. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications and prayers, intercessions, and the giving of thanks be made for, tell me, government officials are they part of the all men? Of course, for kings and for all that are in authority, all that are in authority, pray for them that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. We've been doing verse 1 and we've been doing verse 2a, but now we have not realized verse 2b, verse 2, second part that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. The peaceable life is not all over in our country. The quietness is not all over in our country. That is, it doesn't saturate the place that you say everywhere is peaceful, everywhere is quiet. Every day we're reading of violence and we're reading of ungodliness and we're reading of uh, something that is contrary to peace. But now we're coming together. We're saying uh, the people that are the lawmakers, the people that are in authority and decision makers want them to join along with us that there will be peace in this land. Calmness in this land and there will be the glory of God coming upon this land in Jesus' name. Look at verse 3. Verse 3 says, uh, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have, tell me, does he want the officials to be saved? Does he want uh, those uh, who are not even of the Christian religion, does he want them to be saved? Tell me, tell me. Who will have all men to be saved? And so what's wrong in bringing them to come and hear the word of God? Bringing them to come and worship the creator? God created everyone. Those on the right, those on the left, God created them. Those in the church, those outside the church, God created them. And they need to come and pray unto that creator because he wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of of the truth. Did you notice in that thing I read? I'm going to back to that again. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Second Chronicles chapter 7. And I'm reading here from verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray 
humble yourselves and pray and seek my face humble yourselves and seek his face and turn from their wicked ways humble yourselves and turn from your wicked ways then i will hear from heaven it he will hear from heaven I said you will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin I will heal their land the time of answered prayer for our nation is approaching fast the sign of national miracle is approaching fast the, the time of national transformation is approaching fast God can do it God will do it in response to the prayer of the people, our intercession, God will do it in Jesus' name. Look at Jonah chapter 3. Jonah chapter 3. I'm reading here from verse 5. Jonah chapter 3 verse 5. So the people of Nineveh believed God. They were heathens. They were pagans. They were sinners. They were unbelieving people. They were terrible people. Even Jonah did not want to go there to preach to them. He recalled. He, he retreated. He said, no, I can't do that. The people are so violent. The people are so bad. I cannot identify with them. And then he came eventually because you know the story. How the Lord put pressure on him. The whale swallowed him up. He was three days and three nights in the, in the depth of the sea until he said, I will pay my vow. Now I will do it. I will do what you have called me to do. And he went. And when he went, he wasn't even talking of mercy. He was not even praying at all for them. He said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Verse 5. So the people of Nineveh believed God. And they proclaimed the fast, and they put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh. That's it. The word came unto the king of Nineveh, unto the ruler of Nineveh, unto the leader of Nineveh, unto the governor of Nineveh. And he arose from his throne, and, his, and he laid his robe from him. And he covered him with sackcloth and such in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and publicized throughout Nineveh. Even the places that Jonah could not reach. Even the places that the message of Jonah could not touch. The king now got that message and he caused it to be published, proclaimed, publicized in, uh, through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles and his nobles and his nobles saying let neither man nor beast herd nor flock taste anything let them not feed nor drink water but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto god yea let them turn you remember what the lord has said if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves number one pray that's what they did number two seek the face of the lord seek my face number three and turn from the wicked ways that's exactly what they soul city the whole of nineveh what they were doing and it says now cry mightily unto god and ye let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands who can tell if god will turn and repent change his mind and turn away from his fierce anger that will perish not our nation will not perish this nation will not perish you see there are people and they see they see danger they see doom they see damnation and they say that the country is going to disintegrate they're not praying all they want to see like jonah is their prophecy being fulfilled let everything scatter let there be no election let this happen let that happen and then they will know i'm a prophet in the land that's what jonah wanted he wanted everything to disintegrate he wanted judgment to come he wanted them to perish so that they will know that i am a prophet but god is a god of mercy god is a god of love and God is a faithful God. He will have mercy upon our nation. 
I said he will have mercy on our nation. Verse 10, and God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said he would do unto them. Tell me. Tell me out aloud. Tell me with joy. Tell me with application to Nigeria. And he did it not. God is going to have mercy on this nation. God is going to bless this nation. Peace is going to come again for our nation. Prosperity is going to overflow in our nation. Security of life in our nation. Economy will become better in our nation. As the people of God join with the officers of the, of the government and we pray, answers will begin to come down. The windows of heaven will open and showers of blessing will come upon our nation. Tell me the name of the nation. Tell me the name of the nation. Which nation is going to be blessed? You'll be part of that blessing. I said you'll be part of that blessing. Let's rise up and start that intercession right now. Let's stand up and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, this is what you said you will do. This is what you said you will do. Oh Lord, do as you have said. Do as you have said. Do as you have said. He wants us to pray as a holy nation, the church. He wants us to pray as a haughty nation, uh, the, the citizens. He wants us to pray as a humble nation, knowing what is upon our nation, that the blessings of God be poured down upon our nation as the people of God start that intercession tonight.